Today we're looking at the latest iteration of the HAF 932 case from Cooler Master. This is the case that for some years now has been setting the standard uh, of what people want from a case. It's got all the newer features that people like to see like um, backplate access, really good cable management, big fans, uh, lots of airflow, but it's also very affordable. It's reasonably priced. It kind of can fit everyone's budget. You don't need to be a huge uh, you don't have, to have a huge budget basically to cool down your extensively overclocked or multiple graphics carded out system, if that's a word, which it's not. Um, you have a lot of airflow. It looks really cool. It's really, um, really good to mod, actually. If you like to uh, cut stuff up and throw things into your cases, this is a really great case to mod. It looks real good. Now, what's new about this case is that it has the USB 3.0 up in the front, so you do have two super speed ports up there. Um, you still have the regular ones up here, so you have four more at the top. Thumb screws, obviously, but what's really important about these cases is obviously what's inside the airflow and the cable management. So let's start uh, with the first fan that you're going to see is this 240 millimeter fan, very large. It's going to keep your CPU cooler cool, it's going to keep your graphics cards cool, it's going to bring cool air on the inside. Something that's kind of interesting to note um, this thing does have three 240 millimeter fans and one 170 millimeter fan, which is the exhaust in the back. You can kind of mess with these a little bit. Some people have noted that on certain systems, depending on which CPU cooler you're using and the way everything is set up and how many graphics cards you have, flipping some of the fans from intake to exhaust actually helps. So maybe keeping the front 240 and this 240 as an intake and then turning these two into exhausts gives you like this uh, flow that kind of goes this way might help. So um, let's just keep moving. Let me show you the rest of the inside. There's a lot of really cool features on this um, case. Now, first thing you'll notice, let's see, what is the first thing you notice? Well, the first thing I notice is the caddies. Um, so you do have space for five 5.2, 5 uh, 5-inch drive base. So you can put up to five hard drives in here. The way it's set up right now, the bottom three are regular 5.2, 5-inch caddies. They are toolless, and they are hot swappable in and out, really easy to move. The top two, however, do have support for 2.5-inch drives. Two 2.5-inch uh, SSDs running your operating system, and then three hard drives in a RAID 5 array or in a RAID uh, 1 array for your storage. I think it kind of makes sense, and I like the fact that Cooler Master has gone ahead and kind of assumed that you might be going down that route because it makes a lot of sense and set it up that way right from the get-go. The other thing you'll notice about this is it does support ATX, micro ATX, extended ATX. They're all going to fit in here, no problem. You have seven expansion slots, so if you have uh, multiple graphics cards, you can fit them plus still fit whatever else you want to add, maybe to a PCI Express X1 card slot, like a uh, discrete audio card, or maybe you have a discrete physics card, something like that, depending on what type of board you have in here. The other thing that's really cool is you have, uh, well, you have optional mounting of the PSU at the top, or you have holes at the top for water cooling in case you want to run an external radiator. The regular standard mounting for the PSU is going to be at the bottom. It will support your really long um, PSU, so if you have a really big, like 1200 watt Corsair, um, it will fit in there. Anything that's a little bit longer than the standard one is going to fit no problem. Another really cool uh, thing about this is that you do have a lot of engine, I'm sorry, a lot of uh, wire management options. I said engine because I used to be a car guy and cable management and the engine is just like in the computers. You want to keep everything off to the side, you want to keep it looking neat, something that's easily accessible that you can service the, the wire loom. Same thing with this, if you want to change a, a SATA connector or you want to have um, a PCI Express, let's say you switch from an older card to a newer card and you're going from an 8 pin to a 6 pin, you want to be able to just pull that one cord out, fix it and then put it back in and be um, really neat, keep it all hidden so it looks good as well. And you have a lot of options on here, a lot of it's just these tabs. Um, are the holes up here at the top that let you duck your wires over so your motherboard power connectors can be ducked into the back. Um, and that's also kind of, kind of something kind of cool in this case is that you do have the back. Um, so if you take off these two thumb screws, give me one second while I pull these off, you're going to see that you do have access to the back plate of this. And that's good for multiple reasons. One of which is that you get access to the cables from behind. So you can kind of sneak them back here. Um, and you can just go ahead and kind of wire them through. So if you want to bring from your PSU through this hole and then go to your, let's say, your motherboard power connector through here or to your video card connectors through here, they're going to be hidden. They're not going to be inside the case. They're not going to block airflow. They're just going to be nice and smooth. The other thing that's really cool um, is this. I'm not sure what they call it, but I call it a backplate access port. It's going to let you change your CPU cooler without taking the motherboard out. You know, that's a big mess, big hassle to get everything out and take the motherboard out from scratch just to put a new CPU cooler on. Why? 
put a hole here. This is something that back in the day, I would literally cut a hole in every single case that I got because why not? It just makes so much sense. Now you can change your four screws, take off your CPU cooler, replace it with water cooling, replace it with a different CPU cooler. If you want to test them, you don't have to take it out and put it on a bench. You can just leave it there. It's really, really cool. Um, also, back here is kind of just going to give you a little bit of extra airflow um, through the back. The fan does kind of hit the back here, so it'll keep everything cool. Um, moving on to the front, let's talk a little bit about the front panel connectors. Um, you have quite a few things going on up here. First thing you notice is you have a FireWire right in the middle, and the FireWire 800, and then you have the four USB 2.0 ports to complement the other two super speed USBs. You have an eSATA, and then you have the input and the output for your headset and your microphone. If you're curious as to where your power button is, that is right up here at the top, along with your reset button. And then a lot of people say this is kind of silly, and I kind of agree, but there is um, this rubber mat and then a fill port in case you had a reservoir built in under the fill port and you're filling through, uh, you're never going to use this, don't even bother. What this is good for is putting maybe a screwdriver, it's a little rubber mat here, you can throw your wallet or your keys on there when you come home, I don't know, you can put a bunch of stuff in here. While we're up here, you might as well show you the big 240 millimeter fan, like I said, there's three of them in total, the one on the door, the one on the front, and this one, and then there's also the 170 millimeter fan right here on the back, so that's going to be your only exhaust fan at the moment, um, but still pretty, pretty good, a 140 millimeter fan is uh, still pretty, pretty large. And even if that's the only exhaust, you're going to have a lot of positive case pressure, and that's going to be shot out through there. If you wanted to have a more neutral case pressure and keep just a higher airflow, you could probably flip this fan to be an exhaust, and that would work really well as two. Your other option is because this is so much space up here, you can mount a very large radiator for water cooling up here at the top. Um, so I think you can run a 3 by 120 up there, um, or a 3 by 140 perhaps. So lots of good, actually, if you don't care about kind of ruining the case a little bit and not and mounting the screws through the holes, you could just mount it however you want it, kind of like force the screws in there and put whatever radiator you want up there because there's definitely enough space to put almost um, any radiator. And then only thing I haven't really mentioned is that there are six 5.25 inch uh, drive bays up here in the front. So uh, along with the 3.5 inch bays, you have the 5.25 inch bays up here in the front that are going to let you uh, install DVD drives, reservoirs, pumps, Blu-rays, what else, Eric, what else can we put up in the front? Temperature gauges, any of that kind of nerdy, overclocky, computery, tech geeky stuff that some people think they require. And uh, that's basically it. This is a really sweet case, it's really affordable, it looks really good, it's really easy to mod, got a lot of airflow, good for high-end systems. I like it a lot, it's affordable. The HAF 932 full tower case, if you have any questions on it, email me, and I'll see you guys next time. For more information on the Cooler Master Half 932 full size ATX case, type in C283 1202 into any major search engine.